Hi, this is Dr. Jenny Mitchell, and I want to welcome you to a demonstration of the Mann-Whitney U-Test. The Mann-Whitney U-Test is a non-parametric test, and most think of it as an alternative to the independent T-Test. As you can see, there are four data requirements. First, the dependent variable is ordinal or continuous. The independent variable consists of two categorical independent groups. There is an independence of observations. And four, the Mann-Whitney U-Test works for non-normal distributions. However, you should determine if the two distributions have the same shape. If they are the same shape, you can compare medians. If not, you must compare mean ranks. The example data set shows training method A with the monthly sales following the training and training method B with monthly sales following the training. In the sample, I called them one and two. There are 11 participants in each training method. The null hypothesis, there is no difference in sales results produced by the training methods. The alternative hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis is there is a difference in sales results produced by the training method. This is a two-tailed test. We will use the Mann-Whitney U-Test since the assumptions under the parametric T-Test were rejected. Our significance level is alpha 0.05 for a two-tailed test. You can calculate the Mann-Whitney U-Test in Excel. Although the formulas might seem complex, all of them are shown here for you. Notice the ranks are done from lowest to highest. So rank one is a $950 in training method. And the highest rank, rank 22, is 1860 in training method one. Notice that the ranks cross both training methods. Let's look at the U-test statistic of 22.5. To determine if the calculated U is significant, we must look at the critical value table for a two-tailed test. At 11 and 11, the critical value in a two-tailed test is 30. The calculated U is significant if it is less than or equal to the table value. Our calculated U is 22.5, and that is less than 30. So it's significant, and we would reject the null hypothesis. If this were a one-tailed test, we would compare the calculated U of 22.5 to the critical value one-tailed test of 34 at 11 and 11. Again, since the calculated U is less than the table value, we reject the null hypothesis. Essentially, the training methods produce different results. Now that we had reviewed U, uh, Man Whitney U in Excel, let's start the process in SBSS. First, review the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. We can use the Mann-Whitney U-Test because it passed all our questions, and we are assuming that the parametric T-Test was rejected because one of the assumptions was not met. After meeting the method's questions, we can look at a histogram to see if the two groups have the same shape. If they do not, it means that we will be comparing the means rank and not using the medians. You may prefer a side-by-side -side histogram. To produce a side-by-side -side histogram in SPSS, use graphs, legacy, dialogue, histogram. Put sales in the variable and training method in the columns and say OK. You will see the histogram side-by-side -side is show, shown here. Whether you use a back-to-back -back or a side-by-side -side display, the goal is to determine if you have the same shape. In this case, they do not have the same shape. Since they do not have the same shape, SPSS will run the mean rank. Here are the steps. Analyze, non-parametric test, legacy dialogues, two independent samples, sales in the variable, training methods in the group, and define the groups one and two. Then choose exact and exact again. Now let's look at the data. 
we see the Mann Whitney U test of 22.5, the Wilcoxon W at 88.50, the Z is a negative 2.497, and we see the exact significance for a two tailed test at 0 0.011. Therefore, we know this is significant without hauling out the critical value table. So there's more than one way to assess whether or not we have significance or whether or not we should reject the null hypothesis. Now let's use the following steps so we can pick up the confidence interval information. Go to analyze, then non-parametric tests, then independent samples. In objective, choose customize. In field settings, add your dependent and independent variable. And in the settings, choose customize and check the Man Whitney U, the median test, and the hodges layman estimate so we can get the confidence interval. The output is very clear and includes the confidence er interval from the hodges layman median difference. Note that the confidence interval is from 80 to 510 and does not cross zero. This supports the probability that we should reject the null hypothesis. One of the things I like in the newer output is the graph produced that shows the grand mean with the box plot. It's clear from this that training method A provides better sales results. And we know it's significant because we can rely on our probability tests that we just run. The Manwit U does not use the mean in its tests, and we need some descriptive statistic to be able to write up the information. So go to Analyze, Compare Means, and then Means. In the dependent list, drag sales and the independent list, uh, drag anything there out. And in the options, clear anything in the cell statistic, and then select medium range, minimum, and maximum. Unfortunately, SPSS version 27 does not have an effect size calculation for the Man Whitney U test. I did find a Man Whitney U online calculator at Psychometrica. As you can see here, this calculator also works for two other non-parametric tests. It also has an effect size for the z-test statistic. I show this because the Mann-Whitney shows the eta squared in Cohen D, but not R. And a lot of examples have you work with R for the effect size for Mann-Whitney u-test. So let's look at these two effect size calculators. Note that if by using both of them, we now have eta squared, Cohen, and R. This next slide shows the transformation if I plug in the eta squared. So you can quickly see that this gets confusing. But we do want to report it because we have significant findings and effect size is important. So let's look at each of the effect sizes based on the Leonard and Leonard and then review it based on Ellis Table 1, the threshold for interpreting effect size. I want to throw out Cohen's D because Cohen's measures the effect size effect based on the differences between means, and the Mann-Whitney test does not test the difference between means. So using Cohen's D, D seems inappropriate. A common effect size statistic for the Mann-Whitney test is R, which is the absolute value of Z from the test divided by the square root of the total number of observations. If you use the absolute value of Z, R is positive. If you do not, it is negative, but the effect will, the amount will still help you determine the effect size. In this case, based on Ellis, the effect size would be large. Now let's look at the write-up. Notice that in the write-up, we use the medians. We show the Man Whitney U, the Z score, the significance P, followed by the effect size. I've even added the confidence interval. Now let's look at a table of how it might be reported. I'm going to show you several ways to show it in a table. The first table shows median and the range, the Man Whitney U with sample size, probability, and the Z score and R for the effect size. I would suggest that you add the confidence interval to the narrative. It is quite possible that you want to do a lot more with your data than just one hypothesis. So in table two, we can show the statement. So what I'm envisioning is you would have several statements listed here. But we see the trading methods as the category, the sample size, the mean rank, 
the man Whitney U, the Z, the significance, and the effect size. This seems more accurate for our situation since we use mean rank because the histogram shape for training A and B was different. Again, I would add the critical or the uh, confidence interval in the narrative. The next slide shows a couple of examples of Man Whitney U tables in real studies. One is Goyal's 2008 study of perceived risk of credit card purchase, and the other is Abdullah's 2018 audit committee involvement. Take a minute to look over these example tables that communicate results. As a caution, just a reminder that your dissertation should follow APA guidelines. We are currently on the 7th edition, however, check for updates. You may want to work with APA's downloadable Word template. Here are the references used for this presentation. Thanks for listening.